Hey folks, Wolf Driver coming live at you again. Uh, just when we do anything interesting, I try to fill you in. We are just picking up the bikes. We have a few different areas, believe it or not, that we keep the bikes because we run all over the East Coast. So we keep, we have different locations to try to make our trip a little easier, if you will. So we've got two bikes on here today. You're familiar with them if you've seen me before, the Wolfmobile, which is the four wheel drive bike and the Mushmobile which is one of my sorry the monster mush mobile which has the orange tires and it's not four-wheel drive but it's very narrow makes it a great bike trail bike when we go on the trails that have tight gates close poles ballards as they call them etc so we're picking the trailer up on this uh trip sometimes we put the bike on top of the truck uh depending on the situation or scooter whatever we're riding and we're going to head out to the trail now. Now, I'm going to I'm going to give Princess her meds because it's about that time. So, Princess gets meds a bunch of different times a day. I could probably make it less times a day and give her more medicines at once, but I'm a little uh, how can I say it? A little technical in the, in the sense that I believe that the body can only absorb so many medications at a time. So I try to space out medications no more than two or three in a two hour period, if that makes sense. So I use a product, you may or may not be familiar with this, if you're new to having dogs, something called Pill Pockets. So it's extremely easy for most dogs to take medications. It's basically a pliable dog treat that you can wrap the pills in. Now, that being said, some dogs, I've had one in the past, will pick the medication out. So <laughs> they're, they're smart like that. And um, they have other solutions, which I've done too, something called a pill popper, which is almost like a syringe where you push it and it pops the medicine down the dog's throat. It's not as abrasive as it sounds, but it does work. So I'm gonna take out, I've got a bunch of different meds in here. So right now, I'm gonna give her three meds and wow, i'll explain dude. each one to you in case what's that oh we got someone behind us okay hang on one sec i'm gonna jump in as we move the truck and where are you gonna move right there i'll just wait for you so we're gonna we have someone behind us so you want me Will this be enough room? Trying to let people through. Hey, I can't, uh, I can almost get in. You gonna back up? Just a teeny bit, yeah. Good, that's good right there. So I'm gonna explain all these to you in case people have older dogs or sometimes symptoms that may be similar that you might be able to at least understand with the dog. And maybe if you hear this little dissertation, you might want to uh, maybe, you know, as dogs get older, if they get different ailments and maybe this can be of help to you. I'm trying to dig out a little one. So sorry, about there's a lot of meds in here. These are extras, I always travel with extra meds and I'll explain this to you in one sec what I'm giving her now I can't go through each one because that'll uh, take all day <laughs> um, right here got everything okay so the first one this is just a supplement actually I'm gonna give her this first I get her because a supplement doesn't need to be necessarily wrapped in the pill pocket but it's not one of her favorites, but she usually takes it without the pill pocket, so it, she can chew it, but I get her kind of excited for it. If I give it to her first, she's like, eh. If I give her these, which are really tasty, then she'll be like, take anything after. I don't need to wrap it in the pill pocket. First one, this is something called your Citadol, and that's something she's got like fatty tumors on her liver, and that will just help. She's got a high liver count, basically, and this just um, helps keep it in check. So what I do is I go back to where the boys are. This is, again, Chase and Zorro. Look at Princess, she's waiting. She says, come on, Dad, bring it. She knows. Good girl, pretty princess. Always a good girl. Okay, Chasey, now Chase smells it. I don't know if you can see his. 
the nose going up in the air. And next one. This is called a thyro tab. Now a thyro tab, just for a, basically a hyperactive thyroid, which he has. And believe it or not, this little tab just keeps it keeps it balanced. Twice a day for these, twice a day for the your sit your is your sit it all. <laughs> if I can say that right. She's ready again. Watch. Here she comes. Good girl, pretty princess. She's ready for that. Chase him just moving his tail. Making sure he's not near the door. Good boy. Shutting it lightly because I'm getting back in. Now, the last one is called Doralactin. And Doralactin is some extract from milk, I believe, that they find helps with arthritis. And it's a supplement. So it's hard to measure which one, because I give her other medications for her arthritis, which one's actually helping her the most. But these have no side effects. Basically, the two I gave her have no side effects and the, the two medications and this supplement will have no side effects. So you can give her supplements without having to worry about side effects. When I say by side effects, good girl. Now see, she's gonna chew that. So she's questioning, how good is that? If I give that to her first, she thinks I'm trying to give her something that she won't like and she won't eat it. She just got that in her mind. Good boy, Chase. So, what I mean, when you give medications, usually there's a good and a bad. Medication help with some, helps with something, but it takes away from somewhere else. So, that's why it's all about balance. But with supplements, they usually don't have any ill side effects, which is awesome. I'm going to get in the truck so we can keep rolling, and I'll keep, keep the camera going for a couple minutes. So, this is what it's like to be in the wolf driver. See, now I'm, I usually don't drive because I'm driving all day on the dog trail and I want to be fresh for it, depending on how far we're going. So I wouldn't be able to drive and do the dogs and have my best attention towards them. So where are we headed, Crispy? Any ideas? South. South? Okay, so Chris is kind of going to figure out where we're going. And uh, this thing mounted good. South or east, away from the rain. So that's the medication bit. Now, as you saw, there's about, let me see, a day she takes thyroid, ursitidol, dorolactin. She takes high blood pressure medicine. She takes um, cosequin, I believe it is, desequin, another supplement, which that, that is, and... Uh, Galloprint. I'm trying to think I'm missing anything. And I believe... Oh, and um, Denimarin, which is another liver supplement. But, um, so that's all pretty much her medication list. And she takes medications from when she wakes up in the morning, usually around 8 until she goes to bed at night, believe it or not, till 1 in the morning. So <laughs> some of them, one of them, the... Denimarin can't be given to her. It's either got to be an hour before she eats any uh, substantial food or two hours after she eats anything substantial. Um, so we have to balance that out and do timing. And I like to keep everything consistent. So everything's given almost the same time every day. The other dogs are not on any medications. They're roughly 10 years old, 9 to 10. Again, she's 15 plus. Um, we find a lot of these different uh, I guess like the hyperthyroid and um, the high liver count from blood tests so usually a dog her age where I, I believe it's good to take blood from two times a year every six months or so if you're not having any real issues that would be what I do and of course if you're having issues and they need to balance medicines out you need to take medications you need to take more blood tests, the dog does, so they can, the blood tests don't hurt, obviously, they're just drawing blood like a human, but they can determine how a medication's helping or if conditions getting worse or better, or whatever. Additionally, with them, we'll usually do uh, an EKG and um, uh, that'll determine, you know, heart, rhythm, beat, etc. We'll usually do that twice a year, too. So they get um, a pretty good physical twice a year. And the, my younger dogs do also because once they hit eight, my vet believes that the husky is considered a senior. So, therefore, 
they go through the same regimen. The other Huskies don't get blood work drawn as frequently, though, because they haven't shown any issues where they would need any medication, so we're not really monitoring anything or watching anything so they can get their blood drawn once a year. That's uh, basically how we do it, and it works out well. If you have any questions or anything, I've become quite a resident expert on that because of all the dogs I've had and different health issues that we've had to deal with. So um, not that I'm a veterinarian in any sense of the means, but because of all the experience I have, I certainly um, can share them if need be. If you have any um, desire or questions, but I always obviously would always, no matter what, listen to your veterinarian. And if you're ever questionable, then second opinion sometimes is sometimes is warranted, as well as a uh, specialist. So I had cataracts on one dog in one eye. He had a cataract. And um, we actually went to a dog ophthalmologist and did surgery, kind of like a human. The canine eyeball is not as evolved as a human, so it's not exactly the same but they did a surgery where they sewed a lens in his eye and he was great he had one cloudy eye he had it in both eyes but he uh, was recommended just to do one eye which was great and um, it lasted for a long forever for as long as he lasted the um, cataract was negated and uh, you could see well so interesting and then there's heart specialists and all different kinds of dog or canine specialists that you wouldn't think of. Are you waiting on me, Chris? Okay, if you need me, let me know. Because we're just uh, doing the ins and outs of Wolf Driver. I found a trail that's two and a half miles long in the east end. And I don't know how many miles you're trying to Yeah, five to ten. You at least got to make it four or five. So if I loop it, I can get ten. Or eight or ten. So usually we'll look for trails. In the past, we go for ten to twenty, but we try to do new trails. So we're running out of trails in our area, and depending what time of day. Now it's getting a little late to go too too far um, to do a six hour trip, for instance. But uh, we can go three hours, and we have some go to trails that are really long, but that we can easily get as many miles as we want in without repeating it don't mind repeating them sometimes once but more than that you lose the dog's attention span because they know they've been there they can smell it and they're not as excited there's not new scents and new sights etc what about towards richmond it's doable same trail when we got down there we found some other trails if you remember um, yeah too much for pain that's the capital trail I think Virginia capital so this is uh, our process usually we can't plan for a trail till the day we leave because we never know weather patterns change so quickly like today a lot of rain we thought there was just a chance of showers but a lot of rain is moving north of us so that negates going north of course which is a big chunk of trails and that can of course happen at any time but if we spend a lot of time researching a trail and figuring it out before we go and then the weather comes we waste of time So as we figure this out, I'll end the broadcast and come back to you, let you know what we found and bring you some more interesting tidbits. Remember, comments, questions, concerns, please leave them in the feed. I can't address them directly the way I broadcast right now at this time, but um, I'll be riding in the truck for a few hours, so I'll easily be able to get to them and possibly give you a shout out on the next broadcast or at least um, answer your, your questions you may have directly in the comment section. This is Wolf Driver. You're a dog in the distance. Here, my, and here goes the wolf bat. <laughs> you got to hear this. 
That's all the dogs. They can hear the dog. That's what happens. Let me see if I can get Chase on the screen for you. That's Chase. Just because we see a dog in the distance, hear a dog in the distance. That's how we roll. Wolf Driver, thanks for joining us. Signing off right now. See you soon.